This is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today we're looking at M Retrovision. Once you've installed M Retrovision via M Installer, it can be located in your titles as well as your transitions. M Retrovision comes with multiple add ons, overlay effects, and typography presets. If you'd like to get a real-time preview of what some of these are going to look like, you can simply take your cursor and you can scrub over so that you can see how those animations look and how they will potentially affect your footage. Now, a lot of these are working as adjustment layers. Let me go ahead and show you really quickly how our intro looked, and then we can get started with making a few of our own compositions. So as you can see here in our timeline, this was the intro that you just saw. And we do have this going over top of the entirety of our clip with these three layers here. We have a soft focus color look. I'm going to tap V so that you can see what's going on here. Now with this, we also did a quick trim on the left and right sides to give it that four by three look. So you can see how that's affecting. Then we have film dirt which you can't see it really right there, but it is very subtle and it is just adding a little bit of dirt and uh, some grain artifacts and such over top of the entirety of our footage. And then we do have a grain filter that is just making that super smooth footage not so super smooth because we do want this to look a bit retro. And then as you can see, we have several titles, we have a camera lens effect here that we used, some laser lights and titles there at the end. And then we used the just the pure grain and flicker over a gap clip to create this sort of weird transition into our tutorial. All right, so why don't we grab some footage and we will get started making our own composition. So I'm just going to grab all of these clips. I'm going to tap E to add those in, and then we can take a look at how these are going to be affected. So again, up in our titles, these are working as adjustment layers. And if we want to get a real time preview, as we said earlier, we can just scrub over so that we can get a quick look as to what they're doing. So how about the first thing that we do? Let's just take a look at our add ons up top. You can see here that we have some ghosting, a frame, some glass. So why don't we just click and drag our glass element on top of our clip and you can see how that is being affected there on screen. And then if we wanted to add any sort of title or grid or frame over it, we could do that as well. So why don't we take a look also at our add on paper scrape, which is really neat. We can drag it in over top and then we're going to have our glass and our paper happen right here. Again, on-screen controls for position, scale, and rotation. Over in our inspector, we have all of our animations and position parameters, and then we have our mode for either drop zone, we can have background footage, or we can have solid color. So why don't we just use our drop zone there now you can click footage over in your library sidebar or in the timeline directly. So why don't we just click in the timeline directly and then you can see that that is being reflected there in our drop zone. So I will apply the clip and now we've got that really cool paper. It's like a still frame thing happening, going in. And if you wanted, you could drag this over just a bit, turn off our animation out and then boop, it goes right into the shot. So that's pretty cool. So now we have our frame animates in and then bam, like a hard cut into our scene. 
So as we scroll down in our titles, we can see some more of these overlay effects. We have overlay effects filmic and graphic. So what if we wanted to add a bit of a film burn over this shot? I think that it could uh, really use it here. It really looks good, it has that vintage looking style. And then over in our inspector, we have our burn that we can toggle on and off. We have our opacity here. So if we want to bring that down just a bit, uh, we have our burn size. So that's going to affect how much of the clip that we want. I kind of like it going over the entirety of the clip there. Our hue, now we can show you what that looks like, but honestly, the hue is kind of perfect with the color scheme we have going on. We have our saturation. Brightness, glow, our blur. We can flip that over if we wanted it to be coming in from the other side. We have wriggle, wriggle amount. I mean, you really have all of the parameters that you need to tune this however you'd like. And then a bit of grain parameters there in the bottom. Now you are able to overlay these as we did in our intro. So if we wanted to also add a little bit of, let's say we've got this glass prism here. If you wanted to overlay this, then you have this really crazy kind of cool look. They are in stacking order. So if I brought that glass prism below, you can see how that is affected differently. We have on-screen controls here for again, position, scale and rotation. So let's just say that I wanted to kind of scale that out. So the goal here is to just make her be kind of the primary focus. So we're just using those on screen controls. And then you can see we have that nice dreamy look. We have the film burn going on as well as the glass prism effect. And then we can go down and we've got our graphics. So if we wanted to do some sort of a crazy double exposure we could do it if we wanted to do a double vision we could add a little bit of grunge i think that would look cool so why don't we bring that down over top and then now we've got that grunge look we've got that film burn we've got the glass prism really unique look that we were able to get so quickly our grunge parameters are pretty simple animations in and out we have animation speed fast medium and slow then we have opacity blending mode and our shadows and highlights so really quickly i mean that looks super cool i love it let's continue down we've got some trees that we kind of shot this just wild looking stuff here and again you can see what we're doing if we wanted to grab our multiple displays just to show you that really quickly we are just displaying that over top of our trees we have animations in and out and all of our uh, parameters here. Now, if we wanted to change the drop zone, we could use the background. We could change that to drop zone only and then fill that with whatever we'd like. We have all of the drop zone parameters beneath. If you choose to use the drop zone, we have our prism parameters, blurs, band TV, etc. We can toggle the background on and off if we'd like. Change the background opacity. You can change the color. And then we have shadow. All right, moving forward. So this is a fun little clip here. It's quite long. So let me just find where we want to be. So there we go. We pop up like a couple of goofy kids. And then we are into our next shot there, which is just throwing a football around. Great. So as you can see above we have all of these different looks as we said earlier we have these graphic looks we have this stencil which is kind of neat we can drag it over and then we've got this kind of bleached out highlights and we just have this kind of stencil overlay animation in and out we have our threshold here we have our threshold smoothness overall smoothness our shadows threshold and you can see how that's being affected and that's really affecting the grain as well and then our shadows range we have grain opacity beneath grain brightness and grain scale 
All right, and then let's just say that on our last shot there, we wanted to transition into this last shot and then use a bit of text. So over in our transitions, again, if you highlight over this, you can get a real-time preview of kind of how that's going to look. So why don't we just grab our flash here. We can drag this beneath the two clips and it is just going to flash out. I'll use my arrow tools. We flash out and into our next scene. So we do have published parameters for each of these transitions. In this one particularly, we have our blur strength and then our horizontal and vertical. We have our desaturation strength. We have a brightness strength and a jitter strength. We then have our grain and all of the parameters beneath, and then we have a texture mode and their parameters. So in this texture mode, we can see multiple different paper overlays, and you can see how that is affecting that subtly, but it is definitely there and it is definitely noticeable. I think I like paper seven actually. So you can see Boom, we go out and then we are back into our next scene. There we go, we pop up and then transition right out into this shot here. Really cool. So why don't we do a quick overlay on this just to give it a good look and then we can do a title. So why don't we use, why don't we use a bit of flicker here? You can just have this flickering can use some film dirt. I just love stacking these quickly and seeing what I can come up with. Uh, channel ghosting. Let's see what we got here. And there you go. How quickly we were able to just throw some stuff together. And we've got this really cool kind of ghosty look there. And there might be too much going on to be honest. So why don't we just transition in. So now we can see how that stencil then transition into everything that's kind of going on there. Really cool. And we can add a title on top. So again, for our typography, we can just quickly scrub over each of these to get the look that we're going to want. I really like this title number 10. I think it's interesting. So we're just going to drag it on top. And then we have, once again, on-screen controls for position, scale, and rotation. I'm just going to scale that up nice and big. Over in our inspector, we have our different animation parameters and the position, rotation, scale, and opacity. And then in our title, we can toggle that on and off. Or we can make changes there if we would like. As we continue down in the inspector, we then have our subtitle. We can toggle on and off and make changes there as well. Below each of these are our fonts, sizes, alignments, etc. And then there's a few more things that we can do. So we have our blur that we can toggle on and off along with their parameters. If we would like to add a shadow, we can do so here. I think for this scene, having a shadow actually is nice as it helps separate the background a bit more. And then we have our scratches mode and we can make changes to the different scratches going on within our text. All right, let me show you that final look. And there you have it. Thank you so much for checking out this tutorial on M Retrovision. It is now available on motionvfx.com. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.